Hey, Scott Lara, Scott Lara 1961 on Twitter, thecruisegenius.com for your next cruise or all inclusive resort vacation, slara 1961 at gmail.com. Walking around my Lennar neighborhood today. And what's the, yeah, how about that? All right, so anyway, thought for today. I was just looking at the news and I saw that a teacher in Texas is saying that she is making it a policy not to give her students homework. Now, I didn't delve into it deep, you know, what grade it was, but the point of it is this. I'm 58. Back in my day, we did have homework. But you look today. These kids with these backpacks, and you know, you always hear this on the news, oh, these backpacks weigh 40 pounds and it's hurting the kids' backs. Number one thing I'd want to say is, why aren't all these books and stuff on tablets, you know? Oh, 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 they got homework, they got to fill out their sheets, and I'm a new, and nah. Okay, well, if they got to fill out sheets and stuff, yeah, maybe uh, some people don't have printers at home and computers. I would think most homes have a computer and most homes have a printer. Why not just like have PDFs of all the assignments, save the school, I guess, uh, and then the kid can go home and have a PDF, you know, hit print and do their thing or, or even do it online like DocuSign, right? When I had to do my mortgage, DocuSign, you do it all online, click, 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 boom. Of course, maybe they're concerned that Tommy does his homework, takes a screenshot and sends it to Billy, and then Billy, you know, does his too. I mean, there's always going to be an objection to it, right? There's something that's going to be something. But, you know, you, you go to a school like a couple days before school starts and you see all these books out there for all the kids. And you know there's a lot of money in books. And I'm not just talking about, you know, elementary or high school. College, right? And you know how it is with college. Oh, edition 4.276 alpha. Uh, now, that was last year. We got to give you 427 point alpha bravo for this year because, oh, that's the absolute, uh, obsolete. And I get that. I mean, how many of y'all have an Encyclopedia Britannica anymore? I mean, I remember those. I mean, the leather bound and they were pretty cool. But, I mean, it's 2019. So going back to this teacher not giving a kid homework. I can tell you for a fact that kids in Italy and Spain and France and China and Japan, you think they're, you think they got homework? Now you can say, okay, Scott, you know, there's, isn't there always an excuse to something, right? There's, somebody's going to come back and say, well, you don't X, you don't Y. You know, uh, your kids had a traditional mom and dad in the home. And, you know, your, your wife stayed home and helped Timmy and Brittany with homework and, you know, sat there and, and was there. But, you know, nowadays it's different. You have single parents and, and, all, and I get that too. I have a lot of compassion for that. So what I hear some people say... You know, and actually, I've said it myself. If the kids can't learn what they need to learn in seven or eight hours of school, you know, then blame the teacher. The teacher should be teaching Timmy and Brittany and Hunter and Kelsey and Brianna uh, all this stuff during those hours. And so when the and see, that's what this teacher was saying in the uh, this news article. And I'll put a link to it on this YouTube thing. You know, the teacher, the teacher's getting paid to teach Timmy you know, X, Y, and Z. Well, a very close friend of mine said, and I'm paraphrasing, you know, okay, 45 minutes in this subject, and they, oh, hey, hi, and then they go to the next period, oh, hi, hey, and the next period, and then, of course, all with all the sports and the arts and all these other things, too, and then all the extracurricular things that they're doing, you know, they may be part of glee club or culinary or something else, so they're not really focused. And of course, we know how it is now, right? See, back in my day, kids didn't have ADD, ADHD, HDTV. Didn't have that. If a kid was bouncing off the walls, you know, then there was either A, discipline, 
or B, the parent or the teacher would like redirect to have the kid focus. But let me tell you this, today, if a kid's playing Fortnite or a kid plays Grand Theft Auto Vice City or something else during the long summer months, you know, that's exciting, right? It's mentally stimulating. It's go, 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 go. And you even hear these kids, you know, play for 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14 hours straight drinking Red Bulls or Monster Drinks to keep them going. How can you expect a kid that has that stimuli, boom, 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 and then ask that kid to sit in a classroom and be passive for 45 minutes when you have basically Moses coming down from the mountain teaching the people. Kids not, kids going to want to interact and the kid's going to want to, you know, maybe ask questions or, you know, that kid in your high school class or, or even when I was in the Navy, I knew this guy, why, 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 you know, and it's like you get frustrated with that sometimes. But I think what I'm saying is that with this teacher saying, you know, I'm going to, I commit to you, parent Joe and parent Carol, I'm not sending Tommy home with homework because I want your your stu your child to enjoy childhood and to enjoy laughter. Now let me ask you a question. Do you really think for 37 seconds that when Timmy or Brittany come home, if the mom or dad is at home, that he's going to be out running in the yard, running through the grass and you know, climbing a tree or you know, building a fort? What do you think that kid is doing? On a computer. Tommy's on a computer playing Fortnite, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, Minesweet, Minecraft. Might even be playing a board game. You don't even know what's going on. So, I mean, I... And the thing is, global competition is so fierce now. And I can tell you this firsthand. I know this. I know foreign exchange students personally who have said, you know... You know, in my country, in my homeland, you know, kids go to school year round, year round. And the parents are putting pressure on the kid to do well. And so, you know, th this teacher can do whatever the teacher wants to do. If they think it's important that Timmy and Brittany, Brittany and Kelsey and Brianna and Hunter and Atlas and Cole and Reed, you know, the students, you know, go home and... You know, don't have that backpack, don't have that homework, you know, give that kid more, you know, time, you know, to enjoy childhood. Super. But when that kid's 18, is that child going to be ready for the workplace? Will that kid know math and English and science and uh, have a, maybe even know, like, you know, with schools maybe now teaching auto mechanics or teaching other you know, back in my day, a very another good close friend of mine, um, you know, we went to Catholic school. They had a home ec, home ec. Before I joined the Navy, I knew how to sew. I knew how to iron. I knew how to fold clothes. I knew how, I went to auto mechanics class, right? So I knew, and my friend John Wilk will be saying, yeah, right, Scott, you know. But um, the fact of the matter is, is that to learn how to change oil, and not just the guy, the, the, the girls should too know, know how to change a tire and know how to change oil in a car and know about how to balance a checkbook and know about maybe what IRAs are and 401ks and what compounding interest is. That's the stuff that kids need to know to be productive. Now I will tell you, when I graduated from Aurora Central Catholic High School in 1979, Aurora, Illinois, go Chargers, I certainly wasn't prepared for the real world. I mean, I, I liked English and I liked the spoken word. I was a DJ for a little bit before I joined the Navy. And uh, it was just like a brief thing. But I knew I didn't want to go to college. I was tired of sitting in the classroom. So a friend of mine who worked at, as my manager at the camera department up at Kmart in North Aurora, Illinois, said, Scott, get out of here. You'll still be here 23 years. Or you'll be here 20 years later still in Aurora, Illinois, go, go join the Navy, see the world. Of course, he didn't tell me that, was it 75, 80% of the world is water, so we spent a lot of time there. And if you ever wonder why I love cruising so much, it's because being out there, like Popeye on the open seas, 
So, again, I want to go back to this teacher. And I will post the link to this video. Great. But what parent... Now, I, I'm going to say this. I have a couple friends who were just brilliant. And they are brilliant. They did stay at home after high school. They worked at businesses and they saved their money. My mentor, Gary Vaynerchuk, and you can follow him on Twitter at Gary V or just type in Gary V in Google. His dad and mom had a wine business up in, I think, New Jersey. And this is basically when social media was just coming out. And he stayed there. He lived with his parents. He lived in the basement. And he saved his money. He wasn't going to the Jersey Shore. He wasn't partying. When all his other friends went partying, he was working in the wine store. And he tells a story about all his friends would come up in their Beamers and he would like carry the wine out to their cars. And now Gary's worth hundreds of millions of dollars because he saved his money. He invested early, like in Twitter and Facebook and stuff. And um, just look at Gary. Now listen, if you... His language is a little colorful. He likes, he uses the F word like the, the word the. But again, that's that new, new um, Northeast stuff. But going back to the teacher thing, if the teacher says, okay, no homework, and the child is not learning what the child needs to learn to get a job, and again, I know job is a bad word. Another close friend of mine says, you know, job, career, you know, people should be entrepreneurs, and I get that. Everybody can't be an entrepreneur. We do need people out there who are doing other tasks. You know, um, the guy working at Texaco Express Lube, you know, changing your oil. Uh, people on cruise ships who are, who, are, who are working very hard to send money back to their families. But on one hand, if you're a teacher or you're a school system that says, we're not gonna send homework home for the kids, <laughs> I just hope when that kid's 18, the kid's prepared somewhat for the real world and not just, just to live at home in the parents' basement. Do you remember about a year ago or so, and I can put a link to this too, this 30-year-old guy who had lived with his parents, and of course the parents enabled the guy to live there, didn't you know help him, didn't prepare, help prepare him, that's what parents should do, prepare their kids for the real world. But the, the parents enabled this guy, and then one day they just woke up and said, you know, enough of this stuff. And there's a video. I mean, this guy's like uh, big boned, a little heavy set, you know, a little scruffy, you know. And parents, I guess, sued or whatever and said, you're out. And this guy's like, well, I got no place to go. What am I going to do? I'm not prepared. I mean, I've been staying home, you know, and the parents finally got sick of it. You ever see that meme? about the parents in a motor home. It says, our kids can't move back home because we're mobile, now we got a motor home. Anyway, I think it's important, and I know that's what I did with my kids. I told them straight up, I don't have the money, I, don't, you know, I, I can't do all these things for you, and it's gonna be up to you. So, my kids worked hard, got the Bright Future Scholarship here in Florida. They got a lot of their college paid for. Brittany worked, you know, for a long time um, till she graduated, debt free. And uh, Timmy had worked, and he's he's doing great. Got an incredible job. So does Brittany. But they're on autopilot, and that's what we as parents need to do. We need to get our kids on autopilot so that they can take care of themselves and you know and prepare you know to take care of their families. You know. So I think at the end of the day, with this teacher, great. The uh, the kids don't have homework. They don't have a 40-pound backpack on the back of their back that's going to you know, make them hunchbacks. I get it. But is that teacher doing a real service to those kids when those kids are not going to be able to compete in our global marketplace, right? You got China, you got Japan, you got all these countries, and their kids are ready, man. Their kids are, are doing great. And if you look at our scores, our math scores, our science scores and all these stuff you know it's it, it american kids are always seen at the low, low end of the the wrong and um i just encourage parents to prepare their kids don't count on the teacher don't count on the principal or the administrator it's not their job you know parents you know dump their kids off at school okay you got them you know you prepare them 
you know, I'm busy working or I'm busy doing X. It's the parent's responsibility. And God bless single parents who have to do double duty, you know, doing the laundry, doing the dishes and doing everything. And also, you know, raising that child. So shout out to a lot of single parents. I think they do a great job. And shout out to two parents, you know, who do the best they can. But it's going to be interesting to see the reaction to this teacher saying no homework. And I'll bet you a dollar parents are going to be saying, that's right. No homework for Timmy. No homework for Brittany. See you when you're 18. Hope you're ready for the world. For your cruise vacation, all-inclusive vacation. Scott Lara. Scott Lara 1961. Excuse me. Slara 1961 at gmail.com. TheCruiseGenius.com. Just type in Scott Lara, L-A-R-A in Google. you see all my stuff. Shout out to everybody watching. Peace.